Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Renato. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to switch gears a little bit and talk about the uh, Pentacam AXL wave, which can also be used in biometry. I would like to um, talk with you about the improved workflow that we have seen in our data and also report about some uh, normative um, data that has been um, obtained at our center. You all know that the Pentacam has really been around for many years and this slide is really to show you how much they have improved over the years. In the year 2002, the first Pentacam was made available and it's actually the product that I used uh, when I started in ophthalmology to do my doctoral thesis. And one of the very first papers I ever published was uh, really done with this uh, device measuring healthy uh, subjects. So I'm very proud here to know this device from the um, very beginning. In 2007, the Pentacam HR has become available and ever since we have used this um, device both for checking our patients prior to keratorefractive uh, surgery and we also use this Closer, okay. And we also use um, this device uh, to assess all of our patients um, that suffer from keratoconus both prior to surgery as well as after cross-linking. In the year 2015, a lot of things changed because the Pentacam AXL became available and ever since we can also use the device for biometry. In the year 2019, then, the Pentacam AXL wave became available and that is really a game changer because it's really an all-in-one solution. This next generation device allows you uh, with just one assessment on the patient to obtain total eye aperometry results. You can get an objective refraction. You obtain images done by retroillumination, which can help you to educate the patient, but which can also help you after surgery, for example, when you have a toric lens to check the axial alignment of that lens. The device can be used for biometry and for tomography as we have used the Pentacam AXL in the past. So at our clinic we really use this tool that is so versatile in many different ways. We, we use it to screen for comorbidities and we use the fast screening report for that. We screen all our patients prior to refractive surgeries for corneal abnormalities. We use the refractive display for refractive corneal surgery. We obviously also use the Berlin ABCD staging and progression in our keratoconus patients. Whenever we implant phakic impra, uh, uh, IOL uh, devices, it's very important to thoroughly evaluate the patients prior to surgery and the Pentacam AXL wave is a great tool here. Especially the full sequence overview display really helps us when it comes to screening, patient education, as well as surgery planning and IOL selection, as well as optical biometry. The device comes with an IOL calculator, which includes basically all the new formulae, and it has an integrated IOL database, so it really makes it very easy um, to use. So what is really new when it comes now to the Pentacam AXL wave in comparison to the Pentacam AX, um, AXL. What is really nice about this device is that you are obtaining objective refraction as well and you can both do that under mesopic and uh, photopic uh, condition so it can really help you to find things like night uh, myopia. What I also very much like about that device is that you can uh, really um, use the device for patient education. You can nicely show on the retroillumination image how the patient is suffering from cataract. And what is also great is that the IOL calculation can basically be done with formula for every corneal shape. We even can treat very abnormal corneas using the Olsen ray tracing uh, formula. So that's an image that is supposed to show you the new full sequence um, overview. You see that we are here talking about a fake eye. And first of all, you have um, this toggle switch, which allows you yeah, directly when you are at the screen switching between the uh, both eyes, so you can directly compare the right and the left um, eye. When you look on the right-hand side, you see the objective refraction, and you can see that obviously the objective refraction depends on the pupil size. And I would like to emphasize once again that measurements are taken at various pupil sizes, so you can exclude things like night uh, myopia. 
I've already addressed the retroillumination image, which I find very nice to show the patient and demonstrate how they are suffering from a cataract. But after surgery, you can also visualize the intraocular lens that you have been implanted. I will later on show you a toric lens and you can see the toric markings and use the device for um, checking of the right um, axis. The device also gives you a lot of information on keratometry, the corneal properties and the cord distances. And we all know that this is very important when it comes to surgery, decision and um, planning. So let, let's now switch gears a little bit and talk about a normative uh, study that um, we are currently participating in on the Pentakim AXL wave. And I think it's very important when such a normative um, uh, data set is obtained. You have already heard in the previous talks that there are certainly differences between uh, the different uh, populations. So it was very important in this setting to really have um, investigators from all over the world. What I would like to share with you is the Caucasian normative data set, because at our center we um, work together with colleagues from Italy and Spain to obtain the normative data for the Caucasian um, population. The idea of this study was really to investigate the distribution of ocular higher order aberrations in healthy eyes for a younger as well as an older population. What we did in this study is that we only looked at phagic eyes without any known other ocular pathologies. So in total, we looked at more than 1,000 patients in this study. And in this study, we both assessed anatomical as well as functional parameters. What we did also in this study is that we looked at the dependency of each parameter to age, the spherical equivalent, and um, gender. So let's have a look at the results. This slide is um, really showing you um, how, uh, what we measured for the mesopic pupil diameter with the Pentacam AXL wave. And I don't think that we really have to go into detail here. But uh, what I would like to emphasize here that even 70% of the elderly population have a pupil diameter that was greater than four millimeters. And what is really so nice about the AXL wave is that wavefront measurements are taken under these conditions. So you really um, get the wavefront measurements at a large pupil diameter. And this certainly assures clinical valuable data of the ocular wavefront. And there's much less extrapolation, as we know, um, sometimes is a huge is issue when it comes to other um, devices. So let's have a look at the pupil diameter. We uh, found also in this uh, study that there is a correlation uh, to um, gender. You see that female uh, patients, both under photopic and mesopic conditions, have slightly larger uh, pupils. If this is really of any clinical relevance, remains up to you. But this is something that we found in the study. So let's now have a look at some of the cases. Um, as I said, we use the device now daily in our um, routine. And I would like to share one case with you, which exemplarily shows you um, how the device is uh, performing. So the patient I would like to present is a 62-year-old male patient who came to our department because of a subcapsular cataract. You see that the patient is only slightly uh, myopic and best corrected visual acuity is certainly decreased because of the cataract. And in this um, setting, we decided after using Pentacam AXL wave measurements to go for a 17-diopter um, um, artis symbiose IOL, which is a multifocal intraocular lens. So let's have a look at the um, findings that we had at the uh, Pentacom. It's once again the full sequence overview which I'm showing you here. So first of all, let's have a look at the quality parameters. The first thing we do whenever we take measurements, we make sure that the quality parameters are okay. We then look at the um, a refraction that is taken automatically by the device. And you, think, you can easily see that it's very much in agreement with the subjective refraction that we have taken before. When we have a look at the keratometry, the device very nicely um, lets you know that there is indeed a difference between the anterior um, surface and the to total corneal refractive um, power. So that is something that we should take into consideration when it now comes to the IOL power calculation. 
When we have a look at the different corneal findings, you can see, see that everything in terms of corneal thickness um, and back surface, everything looks to be in order. So let's now have a look at um, some other corneal properties which are measured here. I would say that every everything is uh, normal here. Uh, we are talking about a cataract patient, so a 60-year-old patient, and obviously when it comes to the anterior chamber angle, this is slightly sl uh, lower because of the lens thickness that has increased um, over time. The device is also very nicely um, measuring the spherical aberrations, and you can see that in this case we found a value of 0 0.225 micrometers. In the normative study that we did, you can very nicely see that, as we know, spherical aberrations increase with age. We certainly found here in this study a mean value of 0 0.278 micrometers, but it does not really make that much sense to um, uh, compare the measured result with the mean value. You should really look at the patient's respective age. And when we look at our patients, uh, a patient with an age of 62 years and a, uh, a spherical aberrations of 0 0.225 micrometers, you can see this, that this is actually above uh, the mean value that would, we would have expected in that um, age cohort. The device is also very nicely showing the, the higher order aberrations and for those of you who implant multifocal intraocular lenses, I would really um, advocate to have a look at this uh, result and I would like to do so because we know from uh, this publication that higher order aberrations are indeed very important when it comes to the selection of um, multifocal intraocular lenses. This um, uh, um, uh, paper very nicely demonstrated that in a multifocal intraocular lens, we should look for higher order aberrations of less than 0 0.3 micrometers um, within the 4 millimeter diopter, because if we exceed that value, the risk that patients do not get along with this optic are rather um, high. So this case very nicely shows you that we had a cataract patient we had reduced visual performance. There was a corneal astigmatism against the rule. And in general, yeah, also looking at the higher order aberrations being below 0 0.3 micrometers, that this would be a very good candidate for a multifocal intraocular lens. This patient had a rather larger pupil, so certainly would benefit from an aspheric IOL. The patient did not show any signs of corneal ectasia or um, any uh, sign after laser vision correction. We found that the eye is a little bit longer than usual, but the objective and the subjective refraction certainly correlate, and that's why we proceeded with a multifocal intraocular lens. For the lens power calculation, we used the, um, the, the setting that is already implemented in the device. You can see that here we find various formulas that you can choose from. And when we look um, at the lens that we selected here, which was the crystal lens, um, the Pentacom AXL wave told us to go for a 17 diopter um, lens with a cylinder correction of 1.5 um, diopters. In this case, we also did a measurement with the IOL Master 700. And we, when we look for the spherical equivalent that would have been proposed by the IOL Master 700, we probably would have gone with the same spherical equivalent of 17 uh, diopters. However, when we now look at the correction of the cylinder, we found some differences. We inserted the data from the IOL Master 700 into the online Toric IOL power calculator. And what we found here is that um, this calculator indeed recommended to go with a lower cylinder correction. What was recommended here to achieve a planar outcome was a 17 diopter IOL and a cylinder correction of just 0 0.75 diopters at 175 um, degrees. So in this case, we went ahead with a calculation of the Pentacam AXL wave, and this turned out to be the right decision. And after surgery, we noticed that the patient was a um, planar. So in my opinion, this case very nicely shows how the device can support us in clinical routine. We very quickly, with just one device, get a quick overview of all the parameters for screening, and it highlights also the abnormal. It can provide guidelines to select the individual premium IOL. 
And what is really nice about this device, you do not only have all the screening in the device, but you directly can calculate the IOL, um, um, IOL power because there's an implemented IOL calculators. So problems such as um, typing errors are easily um, avoided. Another case that I would like to share with you, because I really find that very interesting, is we sometimes have patients, especially when it comes to toric patients, where we have a post-operative surprise, and I really think that here the Pentacam AXL wave can very nicely help. So you see in this case that this patient has a toric intraocular lens, and what we will do now with this retroillumination image that we will measure um, the position of the intraocular lens, so you have the markings here, and what we are doing now is that we are centering the rings also on the intraocular lens. And on the left-hand side, you can then see um, the, um, the position of the intraocular lens. So what we found here is that an IOL axis of 33 degrees has been obtained. I mean, something like this you can also measure at the slit lamp, but I think that this is certainly much more elaborate than doing that um, at the slit lamp. And imagine now that this is a patient who has not had a good result um, after surgery. Um, a formula that I really like very much is the Barrett RX formula, which really tells us if we, in a respective case, should rotate the intraocular lens. So what this device is telling us um, is the current IOL axis, and in green you can see the recommended axis, and then it very nicely shows you in what direction you should, the, uh, should rotate the IOL um, in a second procedure to obtain the best possible result um, after surgery. So in conclusion, we really used the Pentacam AXL wave at our center since 2019, and it has become one of our standard devices when it comes to refractive screening. It's also done in all our cataract refractive interventions, and also in patients where we postoperatively want to do a second surgery. We also use it for every keratoconus patient. It's our standard when we look for staging as well as progression evaluation and after cross-linking. And we very much like to use it after surgery whenever we have um, surprises, especially the Barrett RX calculator has become of great importance over the last years. Thank you very much.